LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, liftoff conditions looking pretty good. ASTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Liftoff. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten. Nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Good evening. It is Saturday, March 19th, and you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 12.42 a.m. Eastern Time launch from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station Space Launch Complex 40. My name is Jesse Anderson, and I'm joining you tonight on the West Coast from our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Thanks for joining us for our 42nd overall Starlink launch. This also marks SpaceX's 11th launch in the first 11 weeks of 2022. As most of you may know, Starlink is a satellite internet constellation designed and manufactured by SpaceX. Starlink can provide high-speed, low-latency internet to people living in remote and rural locations around the globe. Our launch tonight is an exciting one. The booster taking our 53 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit tonight is flying for a record-breaking 12th time. Now, weather for tonight has been a watch item, but as of now, we are go for weather at T0 with 70% favorable for liftoff tonight. Now, the range, vehicle, and satellites are all trending green for an on-time liftoff. If for some reason we don't lift off tonight, we do have a backup opportunity uh, tomorrow on Saturday, March 19th. For now, let's take a closer look at the rocket supporting tonight's mission. Now, Falcon 9 is a two-stage rocket and stands 70 meters tall, which makes it almost as tall as the Statue of Liberty, about three-fourths of the 93-meter tall monument in New York City. The first stage, which we also refer to as the booster, is the longer lower portion of the rocket and makes up over 60% of the entire length of the Falcon 9 vehicle. Now, the dark sit that you see around the first stage is a sign that this booster has been flown before, and this particular booster has supported 11 previous missions, NASA Crew Demo-1, SXM-7, Radarsat, and eight Starlink missions. Now, as the name Falcon 9 suggests, attached to the bottom of the first stage are nine Merlin M or M1D engines. And you can't see the engines here, but you'll definitely hear them at liftoff. These engines accelerate Falcon 9 through the Earth's atmosphere and into various orbits in space. The Starlink satellites on board tonight's mission are going into low Earth orbit, or what we call LEO. Now, although there is no universal standard, LEO typically refers to orbits that are less than 2,400 kilometers in altitude. In addition to our Starlink constellation, the International Space Station and Hubble Space Telescope are both currently traveling in low Earth orbit. Now, just above the first stage is the unpainted black carbon fiber structure on your screen, which is called the inner stage. The inner stage is mated to the Falcon 9 vehicle in Hawthorne and stays mated until launch. Although this composite structure is officially part of the first stage, it also connects the first and second stages, as well as houses pneumatic pushers that allow stage separation during flight. The inner stage also houses the Merlin vacuum engine, or what we call the MVAC engine. Though very similar to the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage, the MVAC engine has a larger nozzle that allows the second stage to perform more efficiently in the vacuum of space. As you can see on your screen, the white portion of Falcon 9 above the black inner stage is the second stage. After the first stage, first and second stages separate about two and a half minutes into flight, the second stage will ignite its MVAC engine to carry the payload to its desired orbit. Now, following separation from the second stage, we'll, we will be attempting to recover the first stage for a 12th time on our drone ship. Just read the instructions, and there's a live view of that drone ship on your screen. If successful, it will mark the 104th recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage. The nose cone structure at the very top of the rocket is called the fairing, and that's what you're seeing on your screen there. The purpose of the fairing is to protect the Starlink satellites until we reach space. Around three minutes into flight, once we've exited the Earth's atmosphere, we will jettison the fairing halves and attempt to retrieve them once they return back to Earth. 
Now we want to jettison the fairing halves as soon as we can as the weight of the fairing decreases second stage performance. The fairing halves protecting our Starlink satellite tonight are reflown, with one half flying for a fourth time and the other for a second time. And again, tonight we will be attempting to recover these halves using our recovery vessel, Doug. Now you may be hearing some pops and hissing sounds. Uh, that's from our propellant loading that started at T minus 35 minutes. Our Falcon 9 vehicle uses two propellants, a refined form of kerosene called RP-1 or rocket propellant 1 as a fuel, and liquid oxygen or LOX as an oxidizer. Now an oxidizer is a substance that a fuel requires in order to burn. The liquid oxygen is chilled well below its boiling point so that it has much, a much greater amount of mass per volume, and that helps us so that we can load more of it into the rocket. In addition to these two propellants, we also use the chemical TTEB, or triethyl aluminum and triethyl borane, as an ignition source. The combustion of RP-1 and LOX make the rocket go or fly, but it's that TTEB that sets the match to the propellant mix. Now we fill locks into the first and second stages to full as close to T0 as possible, not to minimize how long the liquid oxygen could start to warm up. Now again, checking back in with the weather forecast uh, with Space Launch Delta 45, it's still showing that we are 70% favorable for liftoff tonight. The vehicle, satellites, and range are all looking good for an on-time liftoff just a few minutes from now at 12.42 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the booster on your screen will be flying for a record-breaking 12th time this evening, another major first for Falcon 9. This particular first stage has lifted off for more more than once from each of our launch pads. And most recently it launched from Launch Complex 4 East in Vandenberg Space Force Base on the opposite coast last December. Now for a bit of history, SpaceX successfully landed the world's first orbital class rocket back on Earth with the Orbcom 2 mission in December of 2015. Although this specific booster didn't fly for a second time, it proudly stands next to our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. So if you're in the area, feel free to drive by and check it out. The booster debuting on CRS-8 in April 2016 would become our first flight-proven booster flying for a second time on the SES-10 mission in March of 2017. So just under a year launch to launch. Our teams at SpaceX have made great strides since the first reflight of a booster. Last year, over 90% of our missions were flown on flight-proven boosters. Now, to date, we've reflown 87 first-stage rockets, and we've successfully recovered a total of 110 boosters. If successful, tonight's mission will also add to that tally. Reusability is important to our mission here at SpaceX as it helps drive down the cost of space access, which is key to a future where humanity can be truly multiplanetary. Now the next major milestone that you're about to see on your screen involves the transporter erector of the TE. Uh, this is the trusted structure next to Falcon 9. In preparation for TE retraction, the TE clamps right below the payload fairing will start to open up, and that helps clear the way so that the transporter erector can begin to pull away from the rocket. And there you can see on your screen those clamp arms are slowly opening up. Once they're fully open, the TE will, 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 restart, will start to retract. Now the TE is the structure that provides liquids, gases, and electrical connections to the second stage, as well as air conditioning to the payload fairing. And at this point, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. And it might be very slight, but that TE is retracting away from the vehicle. And those white clouds that you see around Falcon 9, that's the chilled gas inside of the vehicle above the liquid oxygen tank liquid surface uh, that we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. So when that gas exits the vehicle into the warmer Florida air, the humid air condenses it into water, similar to when you have a cold glass of water and condensation forms around it.
Now we just about finished prop load on first stage. Second stage should finish up around the T minus two minute mark. And once we finish prop loading on both stages, we will vent out the liquid oxygen on the transporter erector line. So you will see some venting and see a lot more of those white clouds that I mentioned. We are approaching T minus two minutes and should be wrapping up prop loading here shortly. Now with prop load complete, now you can see there on your screen, we've got that venting of that liquid oxygen from the transporter erector lines there. And next up, Falcon 9 will be in startup uh, around the T minus one minute mark, so we should hear that call out as well. And that will be when the flight computers take over the launch countdown. And Falcon 9 is now in startup. We are just waiting on the final call from the launch director. And with all systems go, let's listen in to the terminal count and watch as Falcon 9 carries our 53 Starlink satellites out to space. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying our stack of 53 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Now, just a few seconds ago, we did start to throttle down the engines, reducing the speed by decreasing the flow of the fuel to the engines. That's in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. And we should be passing through max Q here in a few seconds. And we've now passed through max Q. So with that, we now have four events happening in quick succession. That'll be main engine cutoff or MIGO, stage separation, second stage engine start one or SES one, and then followed by fairing deploy on the second stage. Now main engine cutoff or MIGO is where all nine of those M1D engines will shut down and that'll slow the vehicle down in preparation for that second event, stage separation. Stage separation is where the first and second stage separate from each other. And right after stage separation, the first stage will start to make its way back to Earth for landing. And while we are able to land on land uh, or on, at sea on our drone ship, we will be attempting to recover the first stage tonight on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. 
And while this is happening, stage two will continue on its journey with the third event, SES-1, or second stage engine start one. And that's where the MVAC engine will light up and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. And just a few seconds after that, we'll be fairing deploy. Really awesome night views tonight. We saw Miko, main engine cut off on that first stage. Uh, we have the first stage on your left-hand screen, second stage on your right-hand screen. We did see the fairing halves deploy from the second stage. Now, while SpaceX has reflown Falcon fairing halves since 2019, as previously mentioned, one of the fairing halves on tonight's mission is flying for the fourth time and the other for the second time, and we'll be attempting to recover the halves again tonight on our recovery sh vessel, Doug. Now, first stage on your left-hand screen is making its way back to our drone ship. Just read the instructions. And on your right-hand screen, the second stage is currently on a nominal trajectory. Now, as stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will complete two burns in order to make its way back to Earth, the first of which is the entry burn. That's where three of nine M1D engines reignite and help slow the stage down as it re-enters into the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. Now, the second will be the final burn for the first stage, and that's the landing burn. Now, this is just a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. And again, these Merlin engines have 190,000 pounds of thrust, so that one single engine is just enough to help, to help the vehicle touch down for landing. Now, if you're just now joining us, we've had a successful liftoff of Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station Slick 40. Right now, you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9's second stage on your right-hand screen, the first stage on your left-hand screen, and it's currently making its way back to our drone ship. Just read the instructions. This is our 42nd launch of Starlink satellites overall. SpaceX's 11th launch in the first 11 weeks of 2022 is the eighth Starlink mission of 2022 and the 149th total overall SpaceX launch, which includes Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. And we're just about a minute away from that entry burn on the first stage. Second stage is still looking good on a nominal trajectory. Now it is nighttime, so a bit hard to see on the left-hand side, but you can see the grid fins on the first stage. There's four hypersonic grid fins on the first stage that help to guide the vehicle uh, back to the landing zone. Again, tonight it will be on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. And we're just a few seconds away from the entry burn beginning on the first stage. And as you can see, your left-hand screen lighting up. That is these three engines reigniting for this entry burn. This should last about 20 seconds long and help slow the vehicle down as it's entering back into the Earth's atmosphere. And as those engines shut off, that concludes the entry burn on the first stage. Now we are just about a minute or so away from the landing burn on the first stage. Again, that is just a single engine burn to help slow the vehicle down enough to touch down on our landing zone. 
That burn lasts about uh, 20 seconds long as well. And just about 20 seconds after that, uh, we should have SECO 1, or second stage engine cutoff 1, on the second stage. Again, everything still looking nominal on the second stage. Some great views of the MVAC engine on your screen. The MVAC engine is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space. It's a pretty powerful engine that you're seeing there on your screen. And we are just a few seconds away from the landing burn beginning on the first stage. And there you can see on your left-hand screen that landing burn has begun. So let's see if we can land the first stage for a 12th time. We had some great views waiting for confirmation of first stage touchdown. And there you can see it on your screen. Falcon 9 has touched down for this booster's 12th time. This marks our 104th successful recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage. Now we are waiting for Seco 1, that second stage engine cutoff. Should be, should be here in a few seconds. Great news landing our Falcon 9 first stage, flying for a 12th time as well as touching down on our drone ship tonight. And we are just waiting for confirmation of Seco 1 and for a good orbit on the second stage. And we have a good orbit on the second stage. And there you can see on your screen, the MVAC engine has shut down. So now we're waiting second engine start two, followed by second engine cutoff two, which is set to occur a little under 40 minutes from now. So we're going to take a short break until then. So sit back and enjoy the Space Tunes.
acquisition of St. Oatmody's. Acquisition of Senor Diego Garcia.
rockets and the rockets and the Mars and you just boggle the mind and mind and mind and mind. And the technology. Hello there, and welcome back to the Starlink webcast. Now, coming up shortly, we have SES-2, or Second Stage Engine Start-2, and this burn will last just a couple seconds before we cut off the engine. And we're hoping to have some live views, so let's see if we can watch as the second stage, there it is, lights up and shuts down pretty quickly here. Back engine start up. And cut off. And there you saw for just a brief couple of seconds the second stage engine starting up and shutting back down very quickly there. Coming up next is the deployment of oh, our 53 perfect. Starlink satellites. Payload deploy should occur at T plus one hour and two minutes. So we're going to take another short break and we'll see you back here in about 16 minutes.
and thanks for joining us for the deployments of our Starlink satellites. Now, if you're just now joining us, we had a successful liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40 a little over an hour ago, and we should be seeing our stack of 53 Starlink satellites deploying here in just a few moments. Let's see if we can get a live view of deployment here in a few seconds. And there it is on your screen. You could see those 53 Starlink satellites drifting away from our Falcon 9 second stage. Unfortunately, we lost that live view, but we did have visual confirmation of deployment. So that will bring tonight's webcast to an end. Thank you for joining us for our Starlink launch this evening. If you're interested in signing up for Starlink service, head over to Starlink.com. As always, a big thank you to the FAA and the range for supporting all of our missions. And thank you for tuning in. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening. See you again soon.